work in, in political science uh, applies game theory to elections. And one of the things that we discovered there is that our electoral system really doesn't work when you have more than two candidates. We saw that uh, if you go back in terms of Ross Perot uh, having a big influence in the Clinton uh, election. Uh, we saw that uh, inadvertently, if you'd like, with the uh, Buchanan uh, in the, uh, the Florida election. Uh, and we saw that in the primaries, where uh, you might very well have imagined that either Mitt Romney uh, or others uh, that were more on the conservative side of the Republican wing might have won if their uh, teams had been uh, pooled, but uh, there was one person who was a little bit separate, in this case McCain, who ended up getting the plurality. And the problem is that uh, I have to vote not just for the person who I like the most, but also the one who I think may have the momentum. Uh, and it becomes a strategic question as opposed to a preference question. And so how can you design electoral systems that allow people to do a better job expressing their true preferences as opposed to uh, their strategic uh, preferences. And by the way, we have a chapter of this on the, on the art of strategy. This is an old problem. I mean, it goes back actually to the French Revolution. Uh, a gentleman named the Marquis de Condorcet uh, was frustrated by uh, the possibility that you could have voting cycles, that uh, you could have one person, A, who beats B. You could have B who beats C and C who beats A. Uh, and it turns out it's not that hard to come up with this. And so then you've got this challenge, which is who you end up picking or what policy you end up choosing depends entirely on the order or the agenda as opposed to what the will of the people are. And uh, therefore, you know, we, have, we hold up this notion, oh, democracy is, is sort of the be-all and end-all. But actually, that doesn't tell you how to vote and how to express or aggregate uh, people's preferences. Uh, Ken Arrow won a Nobel Prize for telling us that there's no perfect way of doing this, that each way has its problems. The way that I like to do it, uh, my preference here, is that uh, literally to have people vote on every possible pair. So if you'd like, they could vote on Hillary versus McCain, Hillary versus Romney, Obama versus... Huckabee, Obama versus McCain, and, and so on. Uh, and then you can say, okay, this election was 70-30. This one was 65-35. Was there one person who could just beat everyone by a majority? If so, great. That's the one we want. And that's actually what was, is now called a Condorcet winner. But if there isn't, is there someone who comes pretty darn close to always winning? So I don't mind the fact that this person lost one election, 51-49, long as they beat everybody else by a healthy margin. And the person who they lost to 51 lost to somebody else by more than 51. And you say, well, okay, that's really complicated. How could I get people to go and you know, vote 26 different times or 100 times? And the answer is simply ask them to rank their candidates. So you say this person's first, second, third, and fourth. And then having ranked the candidates, well, a computer can vote for them. Because if it's between number two and number six, well, you vote for two over six. If it's between three and seven, well, then number three gets the nod. And so, in fact, by having somebody's preferences, I know exactly how they would vote in any election that would be chosen. And then we can offer them uh, really a way to express their preferences, even if they don't get their first choice candidate. There's a group of people who think the Electoral College makes no sense, and put me in that list. And so the question is, how do you change it? Uh, and nobody is going to say, well, my st I want to give up my state's votes just to go with the majority. But there's this movement where states say, if a number of states whose votes add up to over 270 electoral votes, agree to this petition, then all of those states will cast their electoral votes with the nationwide plurality winner. Guess what? Without a constitutional amendment, you have moved away from the Electoral College. And so, essentially, it's, uh, we'll all agree to do something when enough of us get together so that actually We've implemented it.
and uh, that would work. Uh, back in the uh, 2000 election, I actually had a game theory proposal that didn't fl uh, that unfortunately Ralph Nader didn't take. But uh, it turns out that a peculiarity of our electoral system is that two candidates could have picked the same electors. And that way, a vote for Nader could have been a vote for Gore, as long as they had the same election. So Nader could have run and said, vote for me. I'll get my matching grants. You'll be able to show the world how many votes I have. But I realize that my votes actually, if I had to choose between Gore and Bush, well, yeah, I don't like either of them, but I like uh, Gore a little bit more. So that's how, how I'd like them to go. Uh, and uh, he didn't take that. Elections are pretty much a zero-sum game, and so there's the question of, uh, I have limited resources of the candidate's time, and I have to think about there's 50 states, and some of them are pretty obviously Democratic, so uh, Obama doesn't spend much time in Connecticut, and uh, McCain doesn't spend much time in Alaska. Uh, and then you sort of think about what are the uh, pivotal states, and then there's the, can I confuse you and make you think that Virginia is actually going to go the other way if you don't spend any time there and so distract you. Uh, there is the uh, question of, you want to bring this message, uh, and if I can throw enough uh, fear, uncertainty, delay, and confusion in, then uh, you don't get to bring your message out. And so um, what's interesting in most business strategies is that uh, zero-sum or negative strategies, if you like, don't work. Uh, if McDonald's says to uh, the world, hamburgers are carcinogenic, but ours are less carcinogenic than Burger King's. Uh, so, because uh, theirs are flame broiled and ours are fried. Uh, and it turns out that McDonald's sales go down by a million and Burger King's go down by five million. Doesn't really help McDonald's shareholders. On the other hand, if you play a negative campaign, and it turns out that you lose a million votes, but your rival loses five million, you get elected. And so one of the things that we appreciate in terms of game theory is uh, in these zero-sum games, winning votes or causing your rival to lose votes uh, can be equally valuable in terms of winning elections, but it turns out the negative campaigns are less valuable ultimately in helping you uh, run once you've won. Uh, I think there's an interesting analogy to selling Christmas trees uh, right before uh, Christmas. And sort of the day after Christmas, those trees aren't worth very much. And so you have to have a strategy to make sure. Uh, so this is, the, again, look forward and reason backward. Uh, I think it'll tell us something about what we're going to see in terms of the race uh, card strategy. Uh, that uh, it's, a, uh, it's a challenging strategy. It's something that uh, is highly inflammatory. And we saw in the Jesse Helms uh, Harvey Gantt race that right before the election, Jesse Helms did this famous ad of a pair of white hands uh, crumpling up a job, uh, a, a rejection slip. And the message says, you, um, you deserve that job. You were qualified. But it went to uh, a diversity or a, uh, an a affirmative action person. Uh, and uh, essentially, it was just a complete racist um, and uh, outrageous ad. But because it ran 48 hours before the election, there wasn't really time for the whole cycle to go through. Uh, and again, this is a little bit of the look forward, recent backward. You're not going to see the race card really being played now because then there can be the backlash, there can be the response. The time that you'll see it happen is right near the end. Uh, and then the question is, if you really anticipate that, you as the, or the Obama camp has to then have the conversation about it to inoculate themselves. Because if they don't, and it's played, it puts them in a very difficult position. <laughs>